Come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be sharing the 750th review from the gaming gang. And I'm bringing you my thoughts about Delta Green Black Sites from Arc Dream Publishing. Are these eight tales of terror destined to scare the bejesus out of your players around your gaming table? Or are these adventures seemingly more concerned with shock value as opposed to providing a coherent gaming experience? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. I mentioned in the open, this is the 750th review from the Gaming Gang. And I'll be completely honest, I am not the reviewer of all 750 reviews. Yes, the majority of the reviews, but not all. You got to keep in mind, my best friend Elliot Miller was an integral part of the gaming gang during our early years. And currently, Sammy Yuhas provides some excellent written reviews for role playing game PDFs. So, got to give credit where credit is due. And for those of you who are out there saying, hey, wait a second, Jeff, I don't see 750 video reviews, you won't because. A little more than half of our reviews right now are written reviews. Getting close, getting close to about half and half, but still a few more written reviews than we do have video reviews. And that's one of the reasons why I point out all the time that if you only watch the videos on the Gaming Gang channel, you're actually missing out on a lot going on for the Gaming Gang in total. Got a lot of stuff going on on the website that uh, might fly under your radar. All right. Anyway, you're here to see this review. So I'm going to jump on in today. I am talking about Delta Green Black Sites from Arc Dream Publishing. It's written by Dennis Detwiller, Adam Scott Glancy, Shane Ivey, and Caleb Stokes with artwork provided by Dennis Detwiller. The 210 page hardcover is available now does carry an MSRP of $44.99. You can also score the PDF for $19.99 over at DriveThruRPG. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I have Delta Green Black Sites. Before I jump in, I do want to mention that the fine folks over at Arc Dream Publishing were kind enough to send along this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share my thoughts about this book with you. These days, it's really important that you know that. Let's take a peek at the back of the book. I'm not going to read everything from the back here, but just kind of give you an idea. Kitten Horrors, eight Delta Green operations lock bystanders and agents alike in unlit rooms with the cosmic terrors of the unnatural. Unwanted survivals rise from death or slumber into the nightmarish life of humanity. Included in this is PX Poker Night, Cali Gotti, The Last Equation, Lover in the Ice, Sweetness, Hourglass, Ex Oblivion, and The Child. I want to mention The Child is not a full fledged adventure. It's what Arc Dream likes to call a two-minute terror. So it's kind of a expanded, it's kind of like encounter. You'll see when we get into the book. But I do want to point out, you're really getting seven full adventures and then this two-minute terror. All right, let's jump on in. So one of the things I want to mention right off the bat is I'm going to try to stay as spoiler-free as possible. As I go through this book, I am not going to show off every page from this book either, but what I'm going to do is I am going to provide you with a bit of a background about what is the setup for the adventure, kind of share some thoughts about the adventure itself, maybe how I would approach running it, 
or how I wouldn't approach running it. And then at the end, I will provide you with some final thoughts about what I think about this volume as a whole. So we get a bit of an introduction right there. And our first adventure is PX Poker Night, which I have reviewed. I am going to talk about it a little bit again, but I have reviewed this because I received this as a soft cover uh, booklet from Art Dream Publishing, and I reviewed it at that point in time. So I should mention, as far as I understand, outside of The Child, all of these adventures have previously been available i know as pdfs i believe all of them outside of the child were also available as print on demand soft covers as well not positive about that but i am pretty sure that you could actually pick up physical copies of these adventures so px poker night takes place in the 80s and takes place at an air force base where aircraft are sent uh to be decommissioned before they're sent off to, to a, you know, air, aircraft graveyard. It is also a location where airmen who are screw-ups are kind of sent as, like, I don't want to say to die, but they're sent as, like, it's like their last shot. It's their last chance. If they screw up at this base, then that's it. They're gone. So there is a UFO that appears, and the player characters have to deal with it. Now, there are pre-generated characters in this adventure as well. Not all of the adventures have pre-gens, but this one does. And one of the interesting aspects, too, is the pre-generated characters all have their own kind of quirks, which we have some handout cards that as the game progresses, and of course, as in any Lovecraftian horror role-playing game, Sanity comes into play, and uh, it's kind of cool where we get these little little cards that the the handler, the game master in Delta Green parlance, would hand out to the players for them to role play that affliction. So I, I like that. I thought that was kind of cool. So one aspect of this adventure I, I also like is that it takes the alien encounter with Gray's into an entirely new direction. And I definitely like that aspect as well. One thing I'm not so keen about in this adventure is there are a lot of NPCs on top of the player characters. And this is, this is, uh, the base is not a very populated base with airmen, but there are a good number of NPCs that you, you're kind of going to have to juggle not so keen on that. Also, if I'm running this adventure, I would probably do away with some of those NPCs or at least get rid of them as the adventure progresses, I guess I would say, and turn this into a real cat and mouse kind of tale with the player characters. And, oh, I don't know. They're their opponent, I will say. I'm going to skip past. I'm going to skip some pages here because I don't want... Do not want to spoil what's going on here. Okay, we'll go to the go to the pre-gens. Oh, here we go. Here's the cards that I was talking about here. So I thought that was kind of cool. So each of the pre-gens, their names are right up there. And then we've got the various different cards as uh, their insanity may progress. So all in all, I like this adventure. I think, it's a, I think it's a good adventure. I would not run it as written, simply enough. So here, here are the pre-generated characters as well. Then we move into Kaligati, which I am not super keen on this adventure. This is a modern adventure. It takes place in Afghanistan. And the agents are sent to Afghanistan to reestablish contact with a Delta Green operative who has kind of fallen off the radar. Nobody knows what, what's happened to him. He's, he's disappeared. So the agents are sent to find out what's happened to this operative, this 
Delta Green agent. And the the aspect of this adventure I'm not super keen on is that the players are kind of pushed towards having this big set battle at the end of the adventure. Now, that's not the only way for them to resolve this this tale, but they they are kind of pushed towards that. And I don't mind having big set piece battles in my role playing games. My Lovecraftian games, not so much. I will mention that uh, this adventure is kind of torn from today's headlines, even though this adventure is a few years old. Uh, I believe this was one of the first adventures that came out for the new edition or newest, I should say, say edition of Delta Green. It is not a bad adventure. In fact, none of the adventures in this book, what I classify as being bad or poorly designed, it's just, uh, I got to be honest, none of them would I, would I run them as written. But that's kind of the case with just about every role-playing game adventure I've ever encountered. They don't necessarily run things exactly as written. All right, moving right along get to the next one here i do want to share you know some of the artwork show off some of the artwork the artwork's very very well done and as i mentioned it is dennis detwiller's art throughout so very very cool so next we have the last equation and those of you out there who are fans of the lovecraft story dreams in the witch house will certainly appreciate this adventure as well the agents are brought in to investigate a mass murder, basically, uh, that was uh, enacted by a graduate student from Columbia. They are a, a graduate student in mathematics. And this is, this is a very interesting adventure. Might be a little difficult to run for some handlers out there, but I, I like this adventure quite a bit. Something I should mention that you might not be aware of if you're relatively new to Delta Green is that the Delta Green adventures tend to be pretty grisly. Uh, and, and it's kind of funny because Call of Cthulhu is uh, obviously enough a horror role playing game. And people talk about, oh, my gosh, the, you know, the death toll for the player characters, the life expectancy is so short. In Call of Cthulhu, it's doubly so in many of the adventures for Delta Green. Delta Green is certainly a game where you may not necessarily want to be really attached to your characters. Uh, like, once again, very grisly horror in Delta Green as well. Some people who are extremely comfortable with Call of Cthulhu adventures and, and the sort of horror that's presented there might find some Delta Green adventures to be uh, a bit more intense than Call of Cthulhu. In fact, I would say just about every Delta Green adventure is going to be more intense than than most call of cthulhu adventures and i i can't say if it's because it's modern and there are a lot of beats to these adventures that are 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 very very modern as far as you know suicide and child abuse and sexual abuse and obviously these adventures are for mature gamers where that's not necessarily the case for Call of Cthulhu adventures. All right. So anyway, um, so the graduate student kills this house full of people and, and commits suicide. And of course, the agents are brought in to find out what's happened, what's behind it, stop what's behind it. And another aspect of Delta Green adventures that is different than other role-playing games is that it, most of the time, the agents are also there to provide a cover-up, to come up with a, a legitimate 
excuse or reason behind what's happened that is not supernatural or of the mythos whatsoever. That is also an interesting aspect of Delta Green Adventures. Sometimes the agents themselves aren't even expected to to stop the threat. They're just trying to contain it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So this is the last equation. And this is an adventure that uh, things can easily spiral out of control and uh, become a global nightmare. So that's something to keep in mind as well. This isn't, like I said, this is an interesting adventure. Might be a little tricky, especially for newer handlers to run effectively. All right, next we have Lover in the Ice, which is a super creepy adventure. Out of all the adventures in Black Sites, this is the most mature themed. This is probably going to be the one that is really aimed at far more mature gamers than than your usual, you know, 5e D and D gang. It is a good adventure. It is, like I said, super creepy. And if you're a fan of John Carpenter's The Thing, this shares some beats with that. But really, to me, this is almost like an homage to David Cronenberg movies. Uh, I, I'm not sure how familiar those of you out there watching this video are with David Cronenberg, but his uh, his horror movies from the from the 80s into the 90s, super bizarre body horror, things like that. I mean, it's called classics, but this really, to me, this is almost like, wow, you know, I could see David Cronenberg directing the movie of Lover in the Ice. Right there, that artwork is going to, this should be like, you sitting there like, yikes, what is that? Uh, I like this adventure quite a bit. I think out of all the adventures in this book, though, I think this is probably a fit for, for like the fewest groups out there. Um, because there's body horror, there's sexuality to this, uh, that most game masters and players might not feel really comfortable with. I got to be honest. I don't know how comfortable I would feel running this game, especially uh, this adventure. I should say, especially with, uh, with players. I wasn't like really, really familiar with. So then again, maybe I'd, I'd have an easier time running it with complete strangers. <laughs> so I don't know, but this is a good adventure. I like this adventure quite a lot um once again this is another adventure that can easily spiral out of control so what happens here is i haven't even given you the premise of it so there is a just a an insane ice storm that's hitting this town well it's hitting louisiana but uh it's mainly focused around this town in louisiana where Delta Green actually has a, a uh, like a, a storage area that they keep things that they, they don't want to see the light of day. And there's a caretaker for this. It's, it's not a warehouse. It's like just a, like a storage, like, a, you know, you store it kind of place. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's like, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're we're hiding uh, some Cthulhu mythos stuff in the in the you store it, but uh, the caretaker they're unable to to reach them, and the uh, the alarms that are set up in this storage area have gone off saying that there's been a breach, and of course the agents are uh, they're they're you know they put a plan in action to go to Louisiana to find out what is going on and of course this storm is knocked out power it's it's causing people to you know be uh i don't want to say trapped but they're staying indoors uh we have a timeline of exactly what's going on as well which i find to be a little bit of an issue with this adventure 
uh, because we've got the timeline that you, you kind of have to be very familiar with what's gone on up until that point. This is one of these adventures where the player characters come in right in the middle of things and things are about to take a, a much worse turn very shortly. So like I said, definitely like this adventure. Don't want to, uh, this, this adventure has quite a few handouts as well. Don't want to give too much away once again. All right. So next we have sweetness. Once again, this is, uh, this adventure has been out for quite some time and this is an adventure that, uh, kind of, kind of tackles, uh, child abuse. So essentially what happens is there is a, uh, a multi-ethnic family that is, uh, being, I don't necessarily want to say terrorized, but, uh, they are on the, um, the receiving end of some some abuse going on and they're not sure if there's a supernatural element involved or not and the agents are dispatched to find out what's going on uh this this actually features a an agent who uh, a delta green agent who has Fallen on hard times. So I found that kind of interesting. It's a good adventure. It's a short adventure. I do want to mention. All of the adventures that are in Black Sites seem to me that they wouldn't really run more than a couple of sessions. So currently, the first campaign ever for Delta Green is available it's impossible landscapes i have not seen it yet but amazingly enough delta green has been a long, around for a long time and that is the first time we've seen a campaign the rest of these adventures they are not long adventures they're not going to play out in four or five sessions anything like that which some people might might like other people might think well you know i i would like to have seen longer adventures here then we got Hourglass. I really like this adventure as well. So the premise here is that a video goes viral of a woman who's, who's kind of kind of lost it. She's screaming and carrying on about this community and uh, the evil things this community is doing. And all of a sudden she blinks out of existence. Uh, but she's like, you know, screaming in pain and, and things like that. It's not, she doesn't just disappear, but she kind of like winks out. She's gone. And of course the Delta green agents are dispatched to find out what the hell is going on. Once again, this is one of those adventures where part of the objective for the player characters is to come up with some sort of explanation for what happened that people go, oh, okay, like, you know, it was a fake. You know, it was bogus. It's, you know, it's it's all just a setup. It's, you know, it's a scam. Of course, it wouldn't be much of an adventure if it was all a scam. So, uh, this, this adventure involves cults. Uh, there's a church. It's a Christian church that the player characters are going to investigate. This is a tricky adventure as well for a handler to run. And you would probably want experienced players to take part in this as well, because if, uh, if they just go barging in, which is sort of the approach for many role-playing games is just, all right, we're going to tackle this objective head on. Things are not going to go well. Uh, one aspect I do like about this adventure are some of the things that can be placed in the player character's way or some of the things that the handler can do to the player characters uh, are pretty interesting. So 
moving right along. Hourglass, I I, I want to say Hourglass is the longest of the adventures in this book. Then we have Ex Oblivion, which is probably my least favorite adventure in this book. And it starts out with a lot of promise. Uh, essentially, there is a murder. A family is murdered in Arizona. And some, some strange uh, messages and symbols have been scrawled on the wall in their blood. And of course, that's what has brought in the Delta Green agents to investigate. I love the fact that this adventure has a tie-in to the H.P. Lovecraft story, Shadows Over Innsmouth. Love that. I think it's very, very cool. And then as we move into like the third act, which most of these adventures kind of play out in three acts. When we get into the third act, in my opinion, the wheels fall off this adventure. It becomes kind of uh, an odd. The thing that pops in my head is Wicker Man. Although uh, there is just way too much bloodshed in this adventure. And there's no way to avoid it. To me, this adventure is one that I don't want to say it's a railroad. but the players eventually, you know, it's just a timeline of what's going on. And the the players are there kind of taking part as things progress. But they have very little chance of stopping what's going to happen. They need to survive it. And I'm not super keen on that. Like I said, the, it, it's this is really like a bloodbath. This is not the sort of adventure you're going to expect all of the player characters to survive. And like I said, it starts off so promising. It really, really does. And then, like I said, the, the wheels kind of fall off of it. It's not terrible. I know some people out there are probably going to really like it. It's just, it just wasn't my bag of tricks. All right, then we come to the child. And the child, as I mentioned, is not really a full fleshed out adventure it is more kind of an, an extended encounter it's uh, like six well like five pages long kind of give you an idea here and i mean it's fine i mean i could see using this i think it's kind of cool they they call it a two minute terror uh for delta green it's kind of strange that it's included in this book though because the other seven entries are all full-fledged adventures and then we have this eighth one that's a few pages long wouldn't you throw a few of these in i don't know it's just kind of strange because if you were just looking at the back of the book you would think oh that's a full adventure the description here leads you to think you're getting eight full adventures but you're not you're getting seven and then an extended uh, encounter. Uh, I mean, either, you know, could have added a few more in here, or just left that out. I mean, I, I don't think it would have been that big a deal with six fewer or five fewer pages in, in the book. All right. So that is Delta Green Black Sites. Let's swing on over to the other camera. I am going to give you my final thoughts as well as a review score. So out of the seven adventures, the encounter of the child it's just, it's, to me, it's just there. I'm really not, I, I'm not going to say, oh, wow, that's great. Or, eh. I mean, it's just an encounter that you could try to plug in somewhere in, uh, in an adventure that you're running for Delta Green. But of the seven full adventures, I'm pleased with the majority of them. Like I said, Caligati isn't, it's, it's my second least favorite, I guess. I'd say five of the adventures are good to really good. Caligati's like, okay. And then I, I actually dislike Ex Oblivion. It just, like I said, it, to me, it's too much of, too much of a, I guess I will say it. It's kind of a railroad into this big bloodbath at the end that I am not overly keen on. And 
one of the aspects of the adventures in black sites that you have to keep in mind is as i pointed out earlier these adventures all have been previously released and they have been released over a period of years so there are some some beats that maybe a couple of adventures sort of share and it's kind of like well you wouldn't run the one adventure after the other adventure because there are some things that are really similar going on in them. Uh, also, as I mentioned, Lover in the Ice, good adventure, cool concept. Like I said, I could see David Cronenberg directing that film. Probably not going to be appropriate for many gamers out there or uh, many handlers may not feel comfortable running that for their group. So that might be an adventure you just don't even run from the book, even though, like I said, it's a pretty good adventure. As I also pointed out, none of the adventures would I run as written. Now, that's not necessarily a big critique, simply because I tend to tweak adventures that I run. I never run something exactly as it's written if it is a produced adventure. I like the book. I think overall, I think it is a solid buy. It's not fantastic. It, it didn't blow my like doors off or anything like that, but it is good. I do like the adventures. I think some of the adventures stand out far more than other adventures in the book. But I kind of hemmed and hawed at what review score I would give this. I got to say, on a scale of 1 to 10, and it might sound kind of odd that I give it this number, but I give it an 8 out of 10. I think as far as good examples of Delta Green adventures that an experienced handler can maybe snap pieces off of that they don't want, toss it out, that's what I do. I think this is a really good purchase for you to check out. Uh, those of you out there with less experience running role-playing games, not necessarily running Delta Green, might have a trickier time with, with these adventures. So the review score for you might be a little bit lower, just to point that out. But all in all, I can recommend Black Sites, even though a couple of the adventures in there, I'm not super game on. All right. Once again, do want to point out that the 210-page hardcover is available for an MSRP of $44.99. You can snag the PDF at DriveThruRPG for $19.99. Of course, whenever I mention DriveThruRPG, it's important that you know the gaming gang is affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites. So if you're going to swing over to, oh, I don't know, DriveThruRPG, please stop by the gaminggang.com first click on one of our banners that way if you happen to make a purchase i get a little portion of that sale and all those nickels dimes and quarters really do add up and help keep the gaminggang.com around and there are a lot of people who do use those banner ads and it is really appreciated thank you very very much all right also should point out if you like this video by all means give it a quick thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, it'll also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the 750th review from The Gaming Gang. I'm Jeff McLear, and as I wrap up all my videos during this never-ending pandemic, I certainly hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, 
by all means, if you haven't subscribed to the Gaming Gang channel yet, click right here. If you'd like to see the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch, click right up there. And if you want to trust YouTube's algorithm to give you something to watch, click right there. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and everybody, please wear a mask.